Okay, so one common problem L322s faced uh, is a, a, a design problem inherent in the, uh, the scuttle that sits uh, underneath the wipers on the outside of the windscreen. Now, I've just had my windscreen replaced not very long ago. There wasn't a problem before, but you can get a sort of vibration noise, a wind noise uh, at high speed. So uh, at motorway speeds, um, I'll show you now. There's a little clip. Have a watch of this. That's the sort of noise you get when you're 65, 70, um, any faster than that, and obviously you're illegal, but also it makes an even bigger noise. So um, the guy before me had already used a load of sealant, and that's one common fix, and that's what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna lay a bit of sealant, a bead of sealant, underneath the scuttle. I'll show you where just now. When the fitters fitted my windscreen, they tried to help me out by putting some adhesive sticky tape, sort of, uh, you know, thick. Um, it's decent tape, but it didn't work, basically. So um, I'm gonna pull that tape off, run a bead of, uh, now I'm gonna use quite heavy duty frame sealant. Uh, this is the particular one that I've got. I've used this for other applications and it's black as well. Not that you're gonna see it, but just in case you did see a little bit of it, um, it's black. There's also pins. Uh, I think there's four or six um, locator pins that turn uh, clip the scuttle in. They discolor over the years and they go brittle as well. I've replaced those. I'll show you the part number now. Um, worth replacing those at the same time. Okay, so this is the item that we're talking about. Uh, this here, it does press against the glass, but it's, uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, if it lets any water in, it doesn't cause really any issues underneath. Can you see this tape here? Uh, I tried pulling it off just there. That's where the uh, windscreen fitters ran it. It, it. it gets filthy and it's not sticking. So uh, what we're gonna do is run some of this all the way underneath, uh, across the side and uh, let it stick, let it seal. That should cure the noise. Tape. I don't know if you can see here, this tape uh, is the sticky tape that uh, we tried to use. It's just going to come off nice and easy like that. We'll pull it all the way along. And uh, it actually gives me a nice clean <laughs> area to, to stick to as well. I'm going to wipe it all off and give it a, an alcohol clean before we go laying any silicon sealant down. Okay, so the tape's off now. I don't know if you can see in there. Um, but it's pretty dirty, so I'm just cleaning all of the road muck uh, out from there and then we'll give it an alcohol clean and then we can lay the bead. Okay, here's the stuff we're going to use. It's really, uh, really good stuff. Very weather resistant, nice and sticky, very good adhesion. So uh, I've cut uh, about a six mil uh, hole at the end for a six mil bead-ish. in and let that uh, seal down. These are the clips I was talking about. They simply just pop out and then clip back in to replace them. Uh, just let that set now and uh, 24 hours I think but uh, obviously it's, nothing's going to be uh, hurting it now. I'm not going to drive anywhere. Job done. So one other thing I decided to do, when I did the, uh, the side light bulbs um, and put the LEDs in, it's given a very clear white light. And uh, although there's nothing wrong with my headlights, um, when I put them on, you'll see from this picture now, you can see there's uh, a very clear difference between the white and the sort of slightly yellowy headlights that we got. So I've ordered some cool white HIDs. Now these are pretty cheap ones. Uh, now I'm not a fan of pushing a bargain too far. So we'll see how, how good these are. These are only about 13 quid or something like that, which is ridiculously cheap for HID balls. It's, um, 
before this model. Let's stick them in and see what they look like. Right then, replacing the HIDs. This, thankfully, there's the new ones, is a little easier than you might think. If you watch the side lights, this was only a pain in the ass because the side lights down here are a real pain in the ass to get to, so the whole headlight unit has to come out. With the HIDs, they're right here. So you just need to unscrew this, pull the unit out, and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so this is the driver's side headlamp. You're gonna unscrew this big round part here. And can you see, that is your HID bulb there. To remove it, you're gonna twist it un like you're unscrewing a bottle cap. And it's gonna come out like that. And it's gonna be attached by an angle connector at the bottom here. And if you can just see that, to release this, you press this pin in on the side and pull it off. He says. There we go. And that's the old unit. Now at this point, you may wonder, oh no, the ones I bought don't look like that. But fear not. This is the new one. This is the one that's come out. It's this big black thing here. Well, this will come off. So if I just uh, tilt the camera a little bit more. There's a little clip just here. If you push that through, so it's just a little sort of retaining sleeve, if you like, uh, that helps mount. It's the old one. Let's put that out of the way. And then let's uh, drop this one back in place. Now I think there's only, any one way it'll go. I probably should have taken note of that before. There we go, like that. It'll locate once you've got it right. Clip it back in and reinsert. Okay, again, the plug will only go one way as well. Just plug it back in, like so, and then carefully. Don't touch the glass. And there we go, back in. Just need to reattach that now, and that one's done. This side I've already taken out. If I'm completely honest, <laughs> this one's a bit more of a pain in the ass. You've only got a little bit of a gap here. But it can be done. I've done it just now. So uh, get the elbow out and just replace it. Uh, get it back in. The, the tricky part is uh, don't touch the glass. Don't touch the glass of the bulb when you're putting it back in. But um, if you're really careful, you can do it. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what this LED flashing is all about when the car ignition is turned on. So the CAN bus system is going to send a few pulses around to check whether the bulbs are all working. And when you've got LEDs in, these are going to flash while it's doing its tests. So let's, let's have a look at it. So the ignition's just been turned on, it's done a load of flashes. There's another one. And that's pretty much it. Unless I'm mistaken, it's not going to flash again, not for a very long time. Um, and when the ignition's turned on, that's it. And that's with the engine started. Last flash then, and I think that's pretty much done. Those don't bother me, they might bother you, but that'll do. It's not gonna flash while I'm driving. You're not gonna pull off as quick as that, so uh, it's not really a big issue.